Hey everyone, Tyler Edlin here is back with Adam Duff. Greetings. And we're doing uh, the brush sauce contest or challenge, Moonlight Drifter you know, uncovers an ancient artifact. Yeah. And as you guys can see, there's a ton of entries, so they're going to be quick and to the point. Yeah. yeah. All right, so I don't even know if Photoshop can handle <laughs> opening. I think I just totally going to crap out on us. Today you've got like 200 images up on the screen right now. All right. There is no name, I think, on the file. No name. All right. Awesome job. You did the right thing by kind of doing some sketches, finding some value. Uh, I think a lot of it's just too brush. There's too much texture throughout the entire image. You need to simplify some areas and create, uh, you know, to emphasize more of the focal point. Yeah. A little like bit. your sketches are a lot more clear. Yeah. Yeah, you don't want it, too many things to look too brush strokey. And the other thing I would say is on the left and right side of the image, try to crop it in a little bit because there's a lot of empty real estate there that actually isn't contributing to the narrative. So watch out for that as well. Like you could you could even like not have this bright sunlight up here that's a little bit distracting and still use the same lighting. Like and just imply that it's off 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 the camera. That would be good. And then you you would definitely want to just minimize all this noise. It's just it's just the way. The, the sharpness and the, the texture that's kind of applied. We, we know they're clouds, but it's kind of just, it's overcomplicating things in a way you, you necessarily don't want. Yeah. Anything uh, to add to this, Adam? Uh, I know. I think that a lovely brush strokes, lovely organic feel to it, just a little bit less brush strokey, especially in those focal areas. Keep it, tighten it up a little bit. Yeah. Little Keep bit adding more. some green accents in here, I think will be good. And then play yes. up the warm areas. Yeah, absolutely. But overall, great, great job. Yeah. And we get the narrative, and it's it's a cohesive enough. Yeah. All right. So sorry, no name. Moonlight Drifter from was that Kina Tech? Awesome. All right. Ooh. So you're doing a lot of things right. You're doing mannequin setups for reference. You're you're staging yeah. your own uh, photography and photo shoots, and I think that's why yours looks so much more refined mm -hmm. than than like a lot of the stuff we see. And and you're because you're doing you're heading in the right direction. Yeah. So it keep really that up. Difference. Absolutely. Okay, now as far as critiques is concerned, uh, be a little bit careful not to have too many flat colors. And notice that when you're making a transition from light to dark, there's often a little bit of a color shift. So you don't want to go light beige to dark beige, maybe a lighter cool yeah. beige to a warmer, darker beige. And that can actually help enhance the sense of volume in a piece. So you get a little bit to what I call cloudy or, or pastel -y. You're using white to tint yep. all your colors when you're going up in value. You still want to get some color in here. Yeah. And, and you kind of use those things to kind of see like you can s suggest this color by using a combination of like a ton of other colors subtly. Definitely get that in. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Her hand reaching over around his face, the one that's got a bit of a bent wrist. That's an impo important focal point because she's reaching for him. Careful not to put white on white because that's going to mute that focal point. You want to, I would move that hair out of the way to have a nice dark background and make that hand pop out and be careful with the proportion of his head. It looks a little bit on the small side there too. Yeah. A big tall body with a little head. A very common mistake for us cartoonists, right? And I would keep getting some reference too for the um, the fabric and the materials as well. You, you, this is like the first step and I think it's great, but don't be too shy of grabbing other artists like paintings and and other kind of illustrations that where people have painted similar subject matter and aesthetics but have done it really successfully. You can see what the competition is doing in terms of the detail, the yep. finesse, and the level of finish. And I think that's where you're at that level where you, you need to start pushing yourself over that kind of that hump in the road. Yeah. But overall, this is fantastic. Yes, really, really nice. Yeah, it's definitely got, there's a lot of quality going on in this piece for sure. Thank you. The models so are busy. awesome. Yes. <laughs> All right, Moonlight from Daniel. Daniel wants one of our ones to be more harsh. As harsh. You know. All right, make uh, it less bad. <laughs> these, these are great. I love these like comic book style uh, sketches. Yeah, sketches. Nice. They have like a lot of life to them, and yeah. I think that that got lost somewhere in here. Like there, there's a cinematic moment going on with this, and I, I get that, but there's something that. It, it's just getting a little too washed out too quickly. Yeah, your values a little bit too washed out with those values. Like if you look at her, the, the value of her, she should there was, should be a lot of contrast on her on the darks of her clothing and except and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, because she's competing with that background in terms of value and saturation. You have the right amount of simplicity. 
simplification and everything back there. Yeah. But it's like there, um, there's like a slight disconnect with the story overall because like these guys are clearly heading somewhere. She's looking out something, holding the artifact, but then there, there's not exactly a payoff in the background uh -huh. of any kind of sort. There's just there's just mountains. Uh, so we want to know where they're going because they're pointing down here, but where is she looking? And we yeah. just have like some simple or you know everyday looking mountains. Yeah. And also, so there's yeah. Sorry. Compositionally speaking, notice how she's hugging that left side mountain, which is making a big, very heavy statement on the left side of the image. However, you've left a nice negative space between the ships and the mountain, and I would just take her and shift her and center her. Don't yeah. be afraid to frame your focal point because that's how you create a quick read, right? So if she's hugging that mountain, it's creating a, a lot of congestion and then a lot of boring negative space in the middle. So just shift her over, and that should help solve that. And same thing for you, Daniel. Get a lot more reference, you know, stylistically what you want, aesthetically what you want, what you want your level of finish to look like. Yeah. Throw some of that up there too. Try to keep some of that loose brush strokey stuff. Study Works by Sargent is a very good example because your sketches, there's a lot of strength in those sketches, compositionally and drawing-wise. Try to yeah. translate that looseness into your painting. You as have well. a lot of fantastic drawing going on here. Yeah, and, that, and none of that... None of that just is coming through with this. You have a very you know, mundane kind of camera looking focal point doing the, you know, the rule of thirds, which there's certainly merits to that, but here you're just losing a little of your steam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Thank you for submitting. Yeah, thank you for the, for the hard work, too. All right, we got PJ. PJ Sirac. Sirac. Okay, awesome stuff. All right. So, you, yeah, you got some nice mood and atmosphere going here. Mm -hmm. Um Ancient artifact with an evil empire coming. All right. Trying to see. I'm trying to see how the sketch is. Very often, the sketch you're going to get a better, a more spontaneous idea of what that story's about, right? Yeah. Sometimes that can get lost in translation a little bit. Um, I think the first, I just instinctively, my first impact feeling is it's a very, very cold image overall. Yeah. And even if you want to create a just uh, an image that's justified towards the cools, you need to balance it visually, otherwise. You're just turning people off of looking at that image because it's too redundant. And there's a lot of this flat, desaturated gray, which makes, with the browns there, which kind yeah, of makes for a bit of a. These ones. It, it's a bit depressing color wise. So you want to balance that with some contrasts and a little bit yeah. of color variety. Look at some of Nathan Fox's um, color yeah. work for some of the animation films he's yeah. worked on. And it'll show you how to do nighttime image, how to do a cool image, but without sucking all the life out of it. Here, here's a very important point. You're really respecting the image reference that you have on the left side of the image, which in photographic form looks beautiful. But when you're doing your own image, remember your image is unique to the reference. You always have to make a point of stepping away from your image reference, get rid of it, and look at yeah. your image as an image and say, how do I feel about that? And tweak it with your own intuition, and that's usually where you fix things. But if you adhere too closely to that reference, you translate the boringness into your image because it's a photograph, right? Yeah, photography is a, t a d totally different playing field. Yeah. Oftentimes, with the way the camera works, it's a lot different than our eye to work. If you go one-to-one yeah. -one between, uh, you look at any kind of trained painters, uh, scenic kind of painting with a, f a photograph of the same thing, the painting you know, is probably going to be better every time in terms of the color, the visual perception, uh, perception depth of field, and everything. Yeah. And so the camera has a real amazing way of flattening things and as well simplifying the colors. Yeah. That's why you can always tell when something's been painted based on a photograph, right? It's a bit of a, a bit of a dead giveaway. But yeah, yeah like you, your composition's fine and everything. It's the, the colors need to get a little bit more harmony, a little bit more life and vibrancy to them overall. Yeah. And as well as re like refining the brushwork overall. Like it's just very, very sketchy and rough. Um, so keep, just keep practicing at that and that will, that will improve in time. Yeah. Maladin Hurtanu. What do we got here? All right, I can I can see what's going on here. Uh huh. Yeah. I know what you were going for. Yeah. All right. Well, if you look at that, I can see exactly what what turned you on to painting using this color scheme. It's that picture of the woman over up with the blue dress over on the right. What mm. makes that photograph work? Notice how the warmest and coolest tones, the strongest colors, are in the foreground on her. And if we compare that to the background, we're still getting the same colors. There's a harmony there. We still get color, but they've been knocked back with atmosphere. Now look at your image and notice that you've got that beautiful, rich foreground color, but then you don't have that color in the background. You've gone color to gray rather than color to muted. Color. Right? And that's, that's one of the big things that kind of knocks off that harmony in this image. When you, when you have a, a nice, bold 
or even saturated color like a yellow here which is a very strong color and I definitely think it's been played up. You like you need to play that up, but you balance that by surrounding it with gorgeous neutrals. And yeah. you know, and that's using this purple that's in the background to kind of use that with the yellows to create a really brilliant looking neutral color. But when you add black to everything as it looks, I mean it looks pretty much like you added a lot of black. You get like this color that is again very stiff and lifeless and yeah. it sucks the painting and the life out of all well, the life out of your painting and I think, you know, going from there, this is like a great source for inspiration, but you're going to want to get some very direct reference on what's kind of happening up yeah. front here. Yeah. And note, remember that your entire image is one entire harmony, right? So if you look at the two images, the top one is different variations of that, of that magenta rusty red to the kind of the cobalt, the cobalt greenish blue type of thing going on. But that's present throughout the entire image, including the skin tone. If you look at the bottom one, it's yellows and violets, right? The background and foreground are just different saturations of that same color, but you're maintaining that, that complementary color scheme. So pay attention to that. What you have is yellow, blue, purple, green, all the different kinds of colors, and that's where it starts to get a little bit, you lose control of the color a little bit, right? Unity with variety, one of the that's principles it. of design. Misery loves <laughs> company. All right. Awesome. Adrian, how you doing? Nice. Adrian. Adrian. Okay. Adrian. Which is Adrian so was doing great. I saw this in the, the, the hangout the other night. And this is this is certainly a step up from some of the previous um, contest entries they've done. And yes. I like this. You've got your you're sketching, you're concepting out your, your characters and your designs. And it's really creative. And I love that. Yeah. Don't ever compromise your imagination because you have a great one. Yes. Even in color palettes. So this is great. Yeah, okay, so let's see. See, so combining like this dude with the samurai. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With like insect motif is awesome. Yeah, and it works too. For as a design, that really works nicely. Now, what would you, what's your opinion on this image, on the painting itself? Uh, I think just like a lot of polish, I, or just keep pushing your style, actually. Because you have like a, a sort of like a, this illustrated comic book. Yeah. type of look look up uh trent oh, what's his last name kanuga um i'll, I'll leave a a, a a link in the description i can't get his his last name right but he has a very similar aesthetic and approach he, he's a our concept artist working for blizzard and okay. you just want to keep pushing what you have here don't no no um and you know take what i say with a grain of salt but i think value wise it's working readability it's worth working it's just kind of cleaning up your overall aesthetics in terms of the like improving the drawing on some of like the characters and then working out how you can light them. Yeah, yeah, I think I think Tyler would agree that um, you could not possibly possibly push design any further in this image. You are a designer. You know, it's like it's 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 like a, the the god of designers threw up all over your image. That's how awesome it is. The thing that I would say would really add a lot to this image is your posing. Get up off your butt. I say the same thing to my animation students. Stand up and pose because your poses look very mannequin-y and cardboard. Stiff. Yep. You want to actually get some movement. A little some too chill. Into the into those poses a little bit more. Some gesture because they feel a bit stiff, and that that will bring us as the viewer into difference. the moment. Yeah. So you don't want to uh, you don't want to keep those. You don't want to be too robotic with your posing. Get out the mannequins. Get out the the photographs. You know, harass your friends. Yeah. Absolutely. Overact it too. Always overact it so you can simplify yeah. when you draw. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, it's nice. hard to overact in a painting, just so you know. Chris H. Ooh, wow. Okay, nice. This is nice. Yeah. This is like a, a lot of people thought of the same theme. Uh, this oh. this particular uh, the week, we'll see a very similar of a character holding the artifact in the forest, getting pursued by other characters. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, if you look at the sketch on the bottom right, she's glancing over to the left or her yeah. left, right? That is very strong, and you kind of lost that in your painting, yep. looking straight. The left suggests that she's thinking about the guys in the background. She's being pursued, right? Um, I would be a little bit careful with tangents as well. You have a bit of a tangent with the hand and the sword. That can yes. fit in the image a little bit. Right here. And saturations. I think that the warm, t you want to balance those warm tones of the light hitting your face with something that leans more towards a gray to help create a nice, t a nice uh, 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 saturation balance because I think it's a little too heavy in those oranges and blues. It's a bit... It's a bit jar yeah, heavy. Just tone right? it down a little bit there. Yeah. But you have great you have a great combination <laughs> overall. You have a great color scheme and palette going on. It's very readable. Uh, I would just 
Um, I'm I'm trying to figure out the story between these characters and her though. Yeah, it feels like she's being pursued or she's trying to hot. At least in the bottom right, I can I can yeah. sense the narrative being more of she's being pursued, and she's trying to hide something, in a sense. And the two guys are kind of curious in the background. I read that just by her leaning over in her body language, where you yep. kind of lost that just in the eyes. You kept the diagonal pose in the final, but she uh, but the eyes are kind of just staring forward blankly in your painting. I would just imitate. Uh, take oh, and we, I think right. we lost her other arm too somewhere. Like I see it in here. Yeah, right. it's true. Eh? Get that. Yeah, have a little lean in there. Have that arm coming out because it looks like they're uncovering the artifact from this dead body. But yeah. like, yeah, maybe you need a little bit more motion in these characters. Yeah, that graphic read, the angles of her hair, all those nice, all yeah, those very angles. Yeah, very nice. Keep, don't lose that. Keep that. Stylize your image with that kind of stuff because that's that very strong black and white image. I love that. But then you kind of muted it out in your painting. Don't do bit. that. Keep it. It really works. Nice work. Let me see. Let me just double check on. Yeah, the, we got snake. Snake could have. Famish, famish spade final. Oh, wait a minute, I know this. I've seen this before. This is a... I've seen the do it again thing guy. I think there's like a common theme, yeah. a joke going on with that one. Eh? It's from the other hangouts. So they just say when they do it, they got to do it again to get it better. <laughs> you would start again from the beginning. <laughs> All right, let's see what's going on here. See, I'm... I'm there's a lot of clarity huh. I don't think I'm seeing here. Yeah. The arm, I'm seeing it. So is this person sitting? He's sitting. I don't know if that's a hand or a staff. Yeah, it's it's a bit unclear what's going on there. I I, I always thought I almost thought he was do it again. Do it again. Yeah, no, I'm. It's not clear. I think there, there's just a, a severe lack of clarity here. Yeah, like think, like you're like even these images keep referencing things like th like this. I mean, we all know that's like Gollum from stuff from Lord of the Rings, very faintly. Yeah. But like this is just like. There's a group of people down here, and we have a character here. Sitting, holding something. You know what? Same as everything else. Just get your phone, your camera timer. Take a picture of yourself with a sheet over your head. Or if you have, you're lucky enough to have a cloak, put a cloak on. And take a picture and pose it. It's got to be more than, like, you, more than this cloak here. Like, Okay, that works for your design. But like, yeah. that's not going to help you with the lighting. It's not going to help you with the forms. Um, I always shoot my own reference. Always shoot my own reference. Ninety nine, unless I'm very lucky and I can find something online, which is not the case usually. I shoot my own reference. Do the same thing for yourself, and it'll solve all of those problems for you. You won't have to struggle. Oh, ref. Yeah. And that's shoot for more, more fef. Ref. Shoot <laughs> ref. More fef. <laughs> Could even see it because I couldn't. And that's what this guy says. So every everyone can say they're a different tip for you, but really just shoot your ref. Don't uh, always be conscious too about designing the composition more or less. So it's always split fifty fifty. It was yep. a big thing I remember last time. Not necessarily for you, but uh, we ran into that issue a couple people with a couple people last time. But yeah, keep in mind of that. Yeah, Robert Revere. Robert Revere. Oh, awesome oh, yes. stuff. The animator below who can draw circles around both of us combined. Yep. Of a gun. All right, Robert. Let's tear him. Let's tear him to pieces, Mr. Talented. <laughs> Keep working on your backgrounds, dude. <laughs> dude, like, what the hell is this? It's like an incomplete image. Like, yeah, what? Uh, what? yeah but like look at those sketches. I mean, lovely sketch. I love the bottom left. It has that very Frazetta feel to it. I like that one a lot. Yeah, absolutely. This is, like a, this is good, but it's like a whole different part of the story. Yeah, you know what could really add a lot. I think when you're you're line drawing, I'm I'm not even gonna bother. You know what you're doing there. Uh, as far as and it's loose and it's lovely. Uh, when you're coming, when you move that into a sketch, start playing around with depth, contrast, like values and depth, right? So you want I want to get that feeling when I look at this painting that this this dwarven uh, uh, this dwarven warrior is literally leaping right off the page. And to yeah. do that, you need to boost the values. You have to push more light on him and push back that background with value. Yeah, and you can even get like some like cast shadows and stuff in from yeah. his beard. You can even take those, transform them into form shadows if you have yeah. if you have like the right um, blender, which yeah. I don't. But like you can start to really work up your forms a little bit, even if you want to keep it a very anime uh, or not anime, but like an animated, you know, type of style. Like you can yeah. keep pushing things. Like this is like just this could be like a cooler like white overall since you know the atmosphere and then 
where it's highlighted could be that white. You know what I could strongly recommend to anybody listening? It's a channel I've actually been listening to or really like. I've been learning a lot from oil painters. And it's this one YouTube channel called Draw Mix Paint. Uh, and one of we'll them keep a link for that down below as well. Yeah. Uh, he talks about uh, – he, he has one video in particular where he talks about color and exposure. And, and what he, he shows shots from films. And he shows you how there isn't a single color in that entire shot. And we're talking live action that isn't far from white, right? So you want to really make sure that you can hold a white next to any of these and get a very definitive color in the beard, whatever. Even if it appears to be white, it's white in the context of the scene, right? So you want to give you, gives your whole scene a lot more depth and allows you to push your lighting a little bit more at the same time. Even light should be bright yellow or bright red. It shouldn't be white. So just, just a little food for thought to give more depth to your color. Richard Graham. Yeah, your drawing's awesome. Just work on your wow. backgrounds and your, your rendering. Huh, look at this. A lot of very strong drafts. Yeah, draft. everyone's upping their narrative. Yeah. I mean, look at the drawing quality. I like these movie poster style ones. Yeah. And Holy this one. Wait, so... I don't know... Honestly, if we're being real, I don't know why you went with this one. Like, these are a lot better. Yeah. A lot better, dude. Like, this one in particular, this is fantastic. Yeah. And then when you, like, Slap! You have this, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you have this beautiful thumb and these beautiful, like, compositions beautiful, just with that. Right and then there. you go and you take this, it almost looks almost like a, a very nice static 2D, and 2D thing going on. It looks no. very awkward. Like, there's oh. a perspective, everything. Yeah. I don't no. want to look at this anymore. Let's just look at the sketches. Yeah, uh, you maybe you thought it was necessary to have this three three D background and stuff, but I think your overlapping shapes was enough to create a nice yeah. sense of depth and atmosphere, and it was much stronger. Because we have a nasty tangent here. <laughs> yeah, There's, there is some severe perspective things going on. Yeah, very folk arty. Um, yeah. But yeah, the only thing we get out of this is like we could see a little bit more design of these characters, which they look cool. Yeah. You probably need to beef them up just a little bit because they'd be little wiry characters underneath all the suits, like yeah. famished little guys. So you had to beef them up. Think of beef them up, like like some of what's happening here. But like these are fantastic. This is a great, great composition. You 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 have a lot more of the values planned out where this just feels very flat. Um lighting it like like almost like that archer yeah, the series. The texture from is Netflix. very two dimensional. The floor is two dimensional. It's like yeah. the flat texture, there's no perspective to that texture, right? So yeah, no, stick to what, you know, exploit your qualities. Don't, yeah. I, I feel it's almost like he stepped out of your element to do that background a little bit. And Even these thumbnails of the same image, I think are way yeah. stronger. Sure, absolutely. Yeah. So I don't know what happened. Go back to your basics. <laughs> yeah. We're both grilling you for this. So it's definitely, we're, 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 we're expressing your skill is very noticeable. Yeah. And your weaknesses are very noticeable too. So uh, make sure to, you know, make Thank sure you pay attention to that stuff. Beautiful work though. All right, let me see what we got here. Ooh, this is a very exciting composition. Holy shit. Yeah, very dynamic again. The mine in the background? This gives it has a very wow feel to it. Again, yeah, with your style. So I'd keep looking at those artists that are really into that style of art. Yeah. You know, his anatomy, anatomy in this arm looks a little off yeah. to begin with. But like, just saying, like, to keep pushing the depth of field with these, you want to simplify even and enlighten a lot of what's yeah. kind of back here. So you can you can usually do that with really simple things, you know, grabbing um, just some color and then to take a little bit of trial and error to start bringing that in and then or do that on a different layer so you can mess with the uh, opacity yep. and the, um, the 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 color. Yeah, that really makes a nice pop. See like that. So yeah. Now we get that blue injected, and what that's doing is pushing the character up, and then we you know fix the arm. And, and keep kind of going with this. I think it'll look... Because, like, what's happening now is you have, like, the rocks, his pants, and his shirt and stuff. It's all feeling the exact same color and yeah. texture. And value, yeah. So it's you're, you're, it's really messing with your sense of depth in the image. Absolutely. You know, to the a very high contrast textures on the skin, you've got a lot of deep pitted textures with high... Red. You don't want to do that because it, what it does is it creates a very pitted surface. It doesn't, feels less natural. So I would say uh, just try to mute yeah, keep, all that. You yeah, know? Keep working on your painting. Your your drawings really, really like off to a fantastic start. Like your drawing skills are are better than your painting skills. But that's like a good natural progression. Like yeah. you see like a whole different set of problems when the painting is better than the drawing. Yeah. Uh, but like yeah. keep working on yeah the, working on the form and the rendering with the painting. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Absolutely. problem necessarily isn't even in the drawing, unless we're talking about that. His his strong arm there. This is a gangly one, but you know, you're know you off to a good start. You have a distinctive style, and I want you to keep pushing that. Yeah, absolutely. I think that would be definitely in your best interest. Okay, where are we next? Why on this one? What do we got? AA New 2. AA New 2. AA. A lot of people did put See, their names I've seen in. This. Have I seen, I've seen, who is this? Oh! oh. <laughs> did I grab... I. I <laughs> is this yours, Rodney? Yes, it's Rodney Huskins piece. Yeah, I thought it, I thought it was Rodney's because you, yeah, you told me you course. submitted two of them. Boy. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah, because I've seen this. I've seen this. He, he he gave me a sneak peek at it before, so I've I'm like I've seen this. Did somebody submit this before? No. All right, right. so yeah, Rodney wants us to be real with him, and I haven't helped him with this image for everybody listening. He he did this on his own. I'm, he didn't get any uh, behind the scenes help with this one. So it's a it's a fair entry. I think you could. I think this is getting a little too bright and saturated, a little bit flatter. Yeah. With your stuff, you go look at how Dave Raposa illuminates some of the bottom of some of his characters and his illustrations. You'll see what I mean. Uh, you could probably get a little bit more, like a blue, like in the, into the. Um, oh my brush just messed up. But you know, like a little bit more of that uh, ambient light on the top forms here. Which you can just pick, even from your environment, like that. Getting these in here, we see with Rodney what he's done is he's got her looking over to the side, kind of glancing. Over. It's kind yeah, of the same thing we saw. There's guys. There's a lynch mob chasing after her in the background, which you I think you could play up a little bit more. Yeah, like I would create a composition that opens up those trees to show that mob coming through and adding a little bit more contrast to them so we can read those silhouettes of the people chasing after her. But as it stands right now, it looks almost like torches in the trees. It's, yeah. The narrative and, is a little bit lost because of that. So And that doesn't look like that. fire, dude. You know it looks like fire. That is not fire. I'm holding you accountable for it. Rodney, you can do it. Color dodge, dude. Color dodge. <laughs> That's the answer. Get, some, get a little bit more of that, that light kind of going Just, through. Tyler, what's up? <laughs> just yeah, color, color dodge <laughs> fixed. Look at that. You just you call you just cover everything with. That's that. how I fix everything. You hide all your flaws that way. Yeah, but you can get a lot more <laughs> subtle color variety. You know, same thing in in, in the background. Then you yeah, just erase it from the character because this is very like you have like you're getting to start it and uh, you're starting to explore some of the color on the character, but then the background still is mostly entirely monochromatic. Um, and you want to get some of that unity with variety in there. Yeah. Some something like that's very monochromatic as well. But like you can you can play with the colors a lot in this. And I like the atmosphere and the trees are nice. Uh, but you can keep pushing a lot of these things. That little bit of a Dutch angle makes a nice difference too. Yep. You know? It balances very nicely compositionally. Just clarity, especially on those background characters, right? <laughs> Yeah, and just be careful with those saturations. I think and I would do what you have here in the reference, having one arm pushing some of these these branches away, and then one arm, you know, holding this. It would make yeah. it a lot more involved. Yeah. All right, we gotta go to the next one. The dog. The dog is our alarm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Indy. Indy says we are going forward. <laughs> All right, We're Emily. Forward, because he, because he, because he's got a British accent. Emily, Emily, what is happening here? We need some moonlight in this image. Whoa! A lot of a lot hidden in the dark here. Who's this? Who's the artist here? It, it just Emily, I believe it says. Emily, okay, okay. Well, you win automatically because you've got my daughter's name, so congratulations. <laughs> All right. Yeah, no, a lot. I don't know if that's a, on, deliberate or not, but there's a lot. It's a big dark filter that goes right over the whole thing. Yeah, I don't... I, I could see like there was something painted in here. Yeah, but it definitely got lost in this version that we have. So I apologize that this is not what you meant to submit. But right now we're seeing seventy percent black. Yeah, I because I, I can see you've got a big explosion and you've got glowy bits and you've got your character. But yeah, but we're just I'm just getting a big flat screen of dark so be, brown. Yeah, so. be aware of that. Um, I, I it's just hard. It's it's hard to obje uh, critique objectively with because we lost a lot of information. Well, if this is well, if this isn't a mistake, and let's say you had just kind of muted the background and added some dark to the background, 
uh, I would recommend not doing that uh, because as you can see it's kind of it's almost as if you've got an image and then you just put a big black tarp on in front of it we can't see anything so you want to clarity is hugely important when yeah. when somebody says the narrative gives you a narrative you should immediately be able to read that looking at the image and if we're everything's obscured in the dark we're going to lose that information right it keep working on your drawing as well the arm with the foreshortening and everything uh, the pose it, it everything feels a little bit forced yeah uh, not like so natural like we're observing actors on a stage which is what you kind of want to aim for yeah um so keep working on the drawing overall and then you know throw some values on if you can't make it read with values don't don't bother worrying about color yet is yeah, what i'm and, trying to say and reference get, shoot your own yeah we need to see ne next time if you submit again get all your reference and your sketches in there so we can see that yeah remember that that way we could tell what you were going for yeah i tell my students i say remember the human species as we know it today is a product of over two million years of evolution so don't have the audacity of thinking you can do it in your head in 10 minutes. doesn't work that way. You need to be able to reference real life. Martin, right. Martin Pass. Ooh, check this out. Dang. This is nice. This is, this, you could do worse, huh? Yeah. You could do worse. Look at this. Beautiful. It's got a very I old... like your alternate version as well. Yeah. Uh, okay, number one, we all know about that, you know, offsetting your, offsetting your colors trick. Don't, don't abuse that because it's, it's a bit of a cheesy trick. You don't need to. The, uh, the, yeah, this it created a bit of a blur effect yeah. Yeah. that we see like it's like this noisy edge everywhere. Yeah. And usually, by the way, a little a little piece of advice. You can look at um what's this else? Uh, Andy Walsh, I think Andy Walsh. He's an artist, does a lot of sci-fi stuff and stuff like that. Uh uh, it's general. This technique can work for anybody's for any illustration, but it generally tends to lean a little bit more towards metallic, hard sci-fi type edge work. It's more of a sci-fi trick. You can do it in fantasy, but really mute it down a little yeah. bit. Don't overdo that. Um, but I think in terms of the actual image coming in and the drawing's nice. The composition works. Yeah, the draw. It's lovely feeling to it. It really brings me back. Um, I I think overall, just if if you're going for like that. Um, that uh, like the the real kind of fantasy stuff, imaginative realism. Um, just keep working on. I mean, I don't know if it's because it's a low submission, but just keep working on your rendering, and you know, this will you know you'll keep improving, improving once you keep setting your standards yeah. uh, higher and higher. Narrative wise, too, think of it as a playing card, and somebody and you're reading it. The card says "Moonlight mm -hmm. Artifact." And you're looking at it, I see a glow coming out of a hand. You need some kind of visual hint to show that this is an artifact. Maybe mute yeah. down the glow on the artifact or add some glyphs or add some kind of something so that people can immediately go, ah, artifact. And then you can pull, again, the silhouette to these guys out more. Like, I can just bear, I just noticed that there's some dudes back here because, oh, okay. you know, yeah. the silhouettes weren't strong enough. Yeah. So okay. better consider that as well. Yeah. But uh, awesome job, I, I, man! I, I personally think it's a very, it's a very yeah. successful piece. You're going in the right direction. Yeah, for sure. Nicely done. Where are we? That leads us here. Yeah. William Jungman. William Jungman. Okay. Oh, I like this one actually. This is cool, really cool. So here's the image. Oh. Ooh. Which is like really cinematic and neat. Nice graphic read to it. Excellent. Yeah, I, I like that you're thinking kind of on that level. Yeah. Like really well. And you see, you don't have to push your, you don't have to have 2,000 values to get a quick read. He, he's really adhering to uh, like almost a two-value scheme. And look at how nicely that reads, right? Uh, the, I think one of the things that really detracts a little bit from this piece is that over-blasted glow. Because you've yeah, got such a right here. read. I would knock that glow down by, by 65, 75% and just have it as a light hint. You don't need that blast because it's hiding all that nice info. It's take. It's not. Yeah, it's like in, in here, like right? we we could see like a little bit more, you know, design of what this device is, and yeah. it just it blooms out a little bit too much for being, I think, like a major foreground. Yeah. Uh, object, and then you can just go back in since it's working really well as like a sketch. Go back in and, and really polish it up to kind of bring it, you know, into the more of these realms that we and that you were inspired by here. Yeah. Just needs the hours of polish. Yeah. Narrative -wise, it's really cool. Uh, wise I would say you, I, I see there's an artifact because we are we're working on the two value scheme. We're losing the fact that that's actually an artifact. I would add a little glow or something to that. Something, uh, some kind of 
visual information to show that it's an active object in the scene and not just a not just some like oh, art that purple will make sculpture it. decor type of thing. Yeah, you got to see that it's an active object, so you got to light it up and you know give it some energy type of idea. Make it feel. And the glyphs, role. you know, we all love glyphs. Other concept artists love glyphs, so don't be shy to do that. So you yeah, can start yeah. to illuminate some of the environment. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, and then have that be a little more secondary. But this is awesome. Great yeah. design skills here. Nice, man. I like it. And that brings us there. to here, I believe. Yeah. Drifter <coughs> final contest no, from final. Raphael. Oh, how you doing, man? Adam, start us off. I got a good water. Rafael Oliveira. Okay, so we look at the picture. Okay, number one thing that jumps out in my face uh, immediately is saturation. The saturation is a little bit. The saturation strong. monster is wild. Yeah, he's gone wild. Remember, you uh, a balanced, harmonious image generally tends to lean more towards the grays than those heavy saturations on the other side. It's all about playing with the subtleties of color, with little bits of little nuances of color here and there. Your your way up here, um, you know, by default. And yeah. your image starts to kind of look in the right direction when it's actually really, really far down here on the sliders. Yeah. And then you could slightly pick some hints of saturation yeah. very subtly. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Like, this uh, is like, you know, that's the next step for you. It's like, no, just, just keep it way back. Look at it this way. Imagine yourself walking down the street. Full saturation is a dead end. You know, as soon as you hit that full saturation, how close are you to that dead end? Or do you, have you given yourself enough leeway space to progress forward with your color? Study a lot of those master painters. Now, with that said, you, this is a very cartoony image. The more you yep. lean towards cartoon, the more you're allowed to exaggerate your saturations, but still not to the level that you have. Because then you're just going to exhaust people's eyes too quickly. Look up some of uh, uh, Jasper... Um Easing's work, I think, stylistically yeah. and, and saturation-wise, that that's kind of where you want to be at with this. You know who you can check out too is I, I've been watching a lot of stuff by Ahmed Alduri on YouTube. He's got his own. YouTube. How do you spell that? <laughs> Ahmed uh, A H M E D Alduri, which is A L D O O R I. I've been really enjoying his stuff. Here, J Jasper Easing's work. This is, I think, will be a great fit for you. Ah, there we go. Yeah, here we go. Really good stuff. Yeah, so he's got a little bit of that stylized cartoony feel to it as well. He's got a bit of a blizzard. But the drawing look. is also phenomenal. Yeah. And that's where, like, we have a lot of the drawing issues in here where the legs are... N none of this guy is really working right now. I get what he's there for. He's what he's supposed to be doing. I get the action and the moment of the scene. But, like, the drawing on him is, like, so far off from, from this character. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Oh, so, and pose. Again, same thing. Your pose is very from your head. And I can immediately tell because it's a pose that I wouldn't naturally have a pose like this. That's awkward. My body doesn't move that way. In your head, I can see it makes sense. But as soon as you get up, you would open up that shoulder. You would Your arm would bend in a different direction. You'd have a different expression. Your head would tilt differently. So get up off your butt. Remember, for everybody listening, get up off your ass when you're posing. Okay? Do it again. So. <laughs> Not again, from the beginning. Good job, Raphael. Yeah. All right. I think we're here. Yeah. Our Sugan. Sugan Moonlight Drifter. Moonlight. Ooh, Ooh, nice narrative. Hey, good storytelling in this piece. I like. Yeah, there's some stuff going down. Someone's getting the blame. Dang. <laughs> Really interesting stuff. Very, very good storytelling skills in this piece. And from an illustrator's perspective, you've almost got... I would look at Rockwell. He's got a very two-dimensional approach to his work as well. And see how yeah, Norman kind of Rockwell. his compositions and stuff like that. You, you've, you've hit it. Um, now, again, get off your butt, pose, shoot, reference to get that anatomy, to get that posing, to get to start to learn a little bit more about these the guys. body. This is very anatomy from your head, the proportions, uh, the proportions, poses, muscles, all that kind of stuff suffers as a result of it. So throughout the entire image. That's important. Yeah, absolutely. The lighting's making sense. That's good. Um, maybe you could tighten up the, the overall composition a little bit overall, like yeah. make it like, a, you know, just bring things in a little bit more, you know, like have that go here. Yeah. Then you can mix um, this whole <laughs> side. Into the image. Yeah. There you and, go. Or, you know, well, this image. And then, you know, same thing. It's just bringing us back in, like, the, the character is one-third, the inside's two-thirds. Two to three, 70, 30, much better ratios to be working with. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yes, yeah, keep working up your rendering. 
Yeah, the other thing is uh, learn about tangents in art. There's a lot of them in your image. The guy on the right with his arm, his his arm down, leaning like leaning. Yeah, see, I get confused whether this is the, the other side of the door or is part of the room. That yeah. there, there's a bit of a disconnect there. The tangent, what a tangent does is it makes foreground and background elements confusing in terms of their depth. So you want an overlap or a distance. And in that, it makes it look like he's a little tiny little creature hanging off the side of the door. Yeah, right? we really need to, again, sense. over-exaggerate and, and not fall into these little traps that help yeah. when we try to fake a three-dimensional space on a two-dimensional plane. It, yeah. That's what flattens it and breaks the illusion. Yeah, yeah. But cool. uh, overall, I think that's going in a great direction. And again, great storytelling. I like the fact you put a lot of effort, of effort into that. It really shows. Chris okay, Brooks. Hey, Chris, how you doing? How are you doing? You doing? Chris what? Sorry, what's his last name? Brooks. Brooks, okay. Ooh, nice name. I like that. Tyler, what do you think? Readability, your values. Yeah. Um, we could talk about the composition a lot, but... What it comes down to is the values here aren't, aren't working. Yeah. It's dark on dark. We, it's hard to... If you zoom... If Tyler zooms away, you, you won't even be able to locate your characters most likely. You know? No, like not, not on, on this level. We don't know what it would be. And then on this level, if we were to... You know, if we just take it, we take away the colors. The colors aren't working either. But if we take away the colors, if we were to simplify this, looking at it, you know, from, you know, filterizing... See, this is a little bit of what the value structure is kind of happening. Yeah. and like this isn't telling us any information yeah. I, ideally what you want to be able to do is run a low number of the cutout filter on your image and have it still work yeah look at the image. images the two image re image references you have up on the top the woman and the guy and we can read them both right why because their values are working light on dark dark on light and you just create a nice sense of contrast there to create more readability when it's dark on dark or light on light you lose it just like we can see in your image there. Okay, dark on dark on dark. Foreground, midground, background, it's all dark. <laughs> there, there's just not a, a structure to it. You need to work, keep yeah. working on that structure. Yeah, absolutely. Again, I could recommend Noah Bradley's video on master studies. He's, he did, where he goes over the master paintings. He splits everything up into three values. Very valuable stuff. I recommend you go check that out because like, it will yeah. help illustrate exactly what we're talking look about. Look at photos, look at paintings, and just see like how you can break them down visually into three different areas or values. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and that's like a great way to start practicing this sort of thing. Yeah, absolutely. Because then, like, yeah, again, you have reference of the canyon that that works, but you need a reference of a canyon at night. You need um, reference of ships. Starry nights um, and how things would be illuminated. Keep working on that as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and you know what? I see photo textures. Don't even yep. bother with photo textures at this point. Photo textures are a little accent at the very end, if at all. You usually end up donating it. Don't even think about. Don't even incorporate photos into your image. Just draw, okay? Because the fundamentals aren't there yet. You can photo texture this to your blue in the face. It's not going to improve it, right? So just focus on those fundamentals with your value just now. And you're going to see how much that transforms your artwork in a huge way. So, yeah. Just, Just draw. Draw all night. All right, here we go. Alyssa. Basie. Alyssa. Awesome. Ooh, nice. This is really cool. Yeah, a lot It's of... nicely composed, too. Yeah. And you got, like, a lot of your colors figured out, your, your composition. Yeah, this, this works. Yeah, very nice. Very nice. Uh, a little in certain areas, like I'd say on the character on the bottom left, a little bit too sketchy. Yeah, a little bit more clean up going in there. Yeah, a little clean up. You're missing a bit, uh, missing a bit of uh, missing a bit of info there. It feels in those areas where my eyes are really focusing. I'm not quite satisfied with the amount of detail we and find. edges. Yeah, <laughs> clean up. So like you got maybe like a little too warm in here with these these oranges and the and the and the brown. See, like they're a little too saturated. Uh, for the for like this particular area, if you're going to use a warmer color, you go more into this range because it just it's popping in a way that maybe it's like a little too disjointed. Yeah. But like Adam says, like bring in here for like the character and then around the tree and like again with with the photos, if you're going to use photos, completely hide the fact that they're a part of your illustration and image. Like this is again sticking about uh, sticking out a little bit too much. When you have these beautifully painted lilies, here yeah. you have a beautifully painted tree, and then we got like some photo trees right here, which are like, eh, you know, just like yeah. completely taken away from your art. Yeah, 
yeah, consistency with those with those uh, with the objects in your scene, right? But overall, you know, this, this reads really well. The colors, for the most part, are working. You're 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 like almost there. You know, 70, 80 percent there. It just needs a little bit of finesse, and then like a little bit of overpainting with your um, with your own foliage and stuff, and then again continue working on the edges overall. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, and volumes, three D volumes, especially characters a bit flat. Right, you want a little bit of a three-dimensional volume with that. Yeah, you, you like dig right on the backpack and stuff. Get yeah. that into the character. Every every part that that's the character, just is like completely black and flat. Yeah. So it just needs that level of attention, particularly since it's the only character in the scene. Yeah, quality is definitely there though. It's really nice work. All right, moving on. We're on Brandon Crampton. Brandon Crampton. How you doing, Brandon? Thanks for entering yeah. this challenge. All right, so this is this is working. I can see I see what's happening going here. Your values, I think, are pretty pretty yeah pretty solid, and your your colors have a little bit of variety to them. Is Overall. that a, what is that a barrage of arrows or something that's flying? There's over? something going on with this story. This is interesting. I'm trying to see if I can figure out what that what those. It looks almost like flying arrows. This is the moonlight drifter. Yeah, these are arrows. So that's really cool. She's like, oh uh, yeah, there's a few on the ground there. We I can... like that. No, I, there's like some simplicity to this. Some very, um, it's like almost like not like a comic book, but like a really cool way of doing like a cinematic here, and I like it. Uh -huh. uh, if I were to improve anything, it would be a little bit of the muted colors, like up in here, and yeah. the clouds. See, if you take that color, which you have this, you bring, you desaturate it, slightly lighten it. I. Th I think that will get you something more in the range of what you kind of want underneath here, something like that. Yeah. Because that bounce light underneath there, and you can illuminate those forms. Yeah, we're getting a little bit of the volume of those. And then, uh, design-wise, you have a little bit too, too much jitter and noise with the, the mountains. It's like... Yeah. You want to just simplify that, make more broad strokes. So if that's what you had, you want to, you know, with these, you could do something a little bit more along the lines of... Not like... I have a really terrible brush right now in, in angle at this, but something a little bit more simple. Yeah. You, you don't have to be as noisy with, you, with, with the end of your line, even though like realistically it may look more like that. But again, we're designing um, and stylizing reality, and that's how we can kind of get our awesome images. And then like I, I would say just work out a little bit more this side of the image. I think it just – a lot of wasted space right here. Yeah, I feel, it feels a little bit too And this spot. is a little too close to the edge. Yeah. On this side. Like, you see, like, the whole area between the city and the barrage of arrows and the girl? There's, like, a, this big divide between the two. And I would just take that and just shoop, kind of shrink it in to yeah. bring the action closer do, in together. Do a crop like Not this. Not the bit of that, the mountains on the left side. Of, there's a lot of stuff in there that doesn't need to be there. Yeah. And you can move her, like, right here. Yeah. Like, in ter just in terms of space. Yeah. And that way you're cutting out... All that dead space, all this dead space, all this dead space. And it makes yeah. it about the character and, you know, this moment here. Right. When you, you're directing people to look at an image, you want to entertain people in that space. And if it's kind of like somebody over there, somebody over there, some, with all this negative space, it creates for an empty feeling. It's a set designer faux pas, unless you wanted to do something cold. Like, that kind of composition would work in a jail cell, right? It's coldness, sparseness, that type of idea. So try to think... Think, this is really cool. Act. Ooh, check this out. Nice. I like this idea that you're getting from the, um, you know, the Metroid and everything. Oh my god, yeah, that's and so the light. Really cool. This is just coming off of like a little bit too. Um, you glazed some some yellow or orange over a monochromatic painting or you know a value painting where it needs a little bit more attention, I think, to the color itself. Yeah. I'll, yeah. Too, leaning too much towards just a monochromatic gray, yeah. I'd also be careful. Uh, well, a lot of a lot of people do this. The girl with the or the I, I, I'm guessing it's a girl or the the character there with the with the cloak. Mm -hmm. Just adding a rim light is not enough to create a sense of three dimensional volume. A lot of people just try to make the character pop, but they're not realizing that this is a three dimensional form. So adding some kind of a light hitting the back of the character. To kind of create that nice sense of rounded, like some of this uh, right? uh, blue green or purple, like getting a little that into the character will help sure. off shooting a lot of these, uh, you know, forward facing forms. Yeah, absolutely. But like your 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 narrative is really amazing. Your your the overall composition is working really really yeah. well, 
and I, I like for the most part the rendering is heading in the in a fantastic direction as well. Yeah, uh, this is a very. This is working on very many levels. That's why, like, okay, we can start nitpicking some of your color choices, and yeah. then, of course, keep if that's metal, get those highlights in there. Get some very material specific um, reference at this point to keep pushing this forward. Yeah. Right, we're at John's. Hey, John, I hope you got a lot of drinks on your birthday. It was his birthday on Thursday. <laughs> uh, no, happy birthday. He was going to have a party. Yeah. So now well, that I'm over, let's, let's add some critique on top of it. This is working out good, John. The character's looking pretty solid, too. Yeah. Maybe yeah. if, like, a little too monochromatic with the blue and a lot of this. Like a little, yeah, a little more variety in there. A little bit monochromatic. Secondly, again, there's a lot of the negative space happening. That tree you have up on the top left, number one, a little bit of, you abuse those texture. I, I know I have those brushes in my palette, right? This one. But you've abused those texture palettes both on the on the bottom. The leaves on the floor, it's okay. I yeah, Look it's working repetitive. here. Yeah, but a little bit. Be careful to flip it or scale it because I can tell you can kind of like you just kind of snap much. those. I would overlap that tree on top of the, the, the ruin on the right, right here. left side to create a sense of depth and close in that image a little bit more. Yeah, um, just take and it. secondly, I'd bring a little bit more, try to bring some of that complementary into the piece or something to create awesome. a bit of a visual balance because it, it's overall a little bit too much on the cool side. It's a bit cold as an image. Um, so yeah, those are my two main critiques. Those he are wants us to be hard though. He wants us to be hard. Yeah, I think the the background could use a little bit more um, intention with it. Uh, it very just wishy washy, like like a '90s cartoon. Um, yep. You could you could paint a little bit without going into detail. Is what I'm saying. It's just like a little too abstract for what's happening here. You could get a little more more design. This I know, even though we were on a fake, the depth of field is maybe still a little too blurry. Yeah, and soft as well. Uh, yeah, I think... Well, uh, compositionally, you could, instead of just having these kind of random clouds, as Tyler was saying, um, actually create a nice, strong read. Again, Rockwell. I mean, we, John took my course, so he knows what I'm talking about. When Rockwell, as far as framing your composition, he's got the head there. Drive the eyes to the head with a nice opening in the clouds or something like that, right? It can also help us bring in some color depth and around the character to help... See, I think, a bit of I think the trees well. like close off the composition too much. Like You could have the trees... You know, by contrast, like over here. Yeah. And yeah. some of those bushes, and then open up this side a bit more, and then just you know indicate the direction over with like some strong bushes, but like yeah. open it up. If it's closed over here, open it up on this side. Yeah, absolutely. And the tree too. That tree on the left side is also too controlled. Yeah. Nature is not that controlled. It's not this nice little trimmed poodle, right? We want the leaves. It's a branch with a bunch of leaves that come out. Get some of that nice, interesting form that comes out in natural trees, right? And uh, hey, Vincent. It's, just a, it's just a circly thing, right? Bring in some real organic form into those trees. Study how trees grow is the best way to solve that. It'll help you understand exactly what I'm talking about there. So this is All a right. cool idea, and I like your story. And I like you're designing a whole race of people and stuff. Yeah. But, 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 but. It worked. Yeah. You didn't finish it. Yeah. Not even to your own level. We're as you can see we're getting we're getting to the point with the group where we're getting like on this one a decent amount of people so we give everybody a fair shot at least submit something that you would consider finished. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Well, maybe this is Everybody, not just I'm not trying to pick on uh, Vincent, but like, yeah. if you clearly know you didn't finish a piece, don't don't, don't submit it so we can only you know help you at your highest threshold. Or label it work in progress, you know, just so that people don't uh, misinterpret that as a final or something like that, for sure. Um, but with that, so if I t if I take the characters out of the piece and I just look at the rendering of the clouds, those cl the style, the design is beautiful. Very stylized. I love the look of those clouds. That has a nice feel to it. Um, and I'm sure if you just apply more of that to your characters, I'm pretty sure this is a work in progress. If you apply more of this to the characters... You got something really cool. Because yeah, these designs are all nice and everything. It's just yeah. that we have a, these characters that are you didn't get to yet. Also, a lot of negative space, and I have no clue. There's no narrative in here at all. I, there's no relic. I don't see a relic. I just see random there's characters. There's these watchers that are... They yeah. leave their... 
Kingdom Behind. I don't know what I'm looking at. I just look. Yeah. I just random characters and creatures. Yeah, it's not yeah. quite as accurate as what you're showing here. If it's yeah. like Adam missed the whole part about the story, and now he's like trying to make sense of that, and it it, it could use certainly use some more clarity. There is. You're saying there is a relic in here. I know. I, I he the, the the idea it says there's a relic in there. Okay, yeah, but I'm not. I should yeah. immediately identify with that in the image. And here, I just what I'm really seeing is this stylized kind of skater style cartoon drawing girl walking over on the side with some other figures in the back, and that's all I'm really getting out of this. I love the style, but I'm not getting any narrative to it. So, um, just yeah, keep thinking about that. Label it as as a whip. We'll we'll get that because it definitely looks like one for sure. But I love their style. All right. What do we got? The name right here. Leva. Leva, okay. Thank you for submitting this. Ah, Shou Chu Naite. Full uh, storyboard and animatic, but he won't, but they, but they won't actually uh, animate it. Okay, so this is cool. Drawing style, Look yes. At, see, that's building a nice palette, Beautiful. a unified palette right oh, here. Oh, I like this. Very much like that drawing. I love your nice use of weight and gestures. This is making ah, exquisite. a simplified uh, value structure work. Yep, works beautifully. Uh, do we have a final, or do we have a final on this? We, ah, yeah, well, something beautiful. like this. So this is, this is supposed to show the idea with the can um, the camera panning and how this is all. This is really complex and cool. Yeah, I like a lot. that. Like it shows the idea of the. Um, of the room and structure, which is very awesome. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, so we'll just look at this then. Again? What's our artist's name? Leva. Here? Leva. Okay. You have a very nicely controlled composition, very vertical, very noble, very authoritative very type of almost like Greek architecture type of thing going on. Okay. The characters in and of themselves are where you get your movement in this shot. That's the power of the shot. So the fact that you have one character kind of leaning forward and the other one kind of leaning on an elbow. You've lost the pose. That gesture, the sweeping lines moving towards each other, that's where you'd find the real power of the scene. And you lose it in your character with the cloak because it's a very generic, non-gesturally pose. Yeah, they're going to have like the, um, what Adam's, I think Adam's saying is like having that, that, that cloak coming up flowing yeah. more like this. Yeah. And then if you were to angle like the character as a whole, maybe like you could show some more movement in the character. Yeah, kind of a more dashing. definitive line. Even even if you look, Tyler, even if you look up at the just the one she's got at the top with the nice kind of sweeping uh, C curve that comes out like that at the bottom. Up it here, creates a sense of diagonal movement. Yeah, I would like be, for instance the swan image you've got there with a bit of that swoop to the cape. I would just exaggerate that so that you have a little bit more of a diagonal moving forward that kind of pushes the characters in towards each other. It's giving you more of a diagonal swoop to your line because that that's something you want like that is your strength in your drawing exploit that it's a very cool idea i'd like to see yeah. what you could do if you could make this like a mock-up of like a finished still from the animation though yeah, yeah overall yeah. this is still like the design is very good but the yeah. presentation is very rough yeah so and i'd like to see cool. like that as like okay that's totally like a still from the movie and that like, that would look amazing yeah, and you can but even see he's got the camera move in there. Overall, from, very, yeah. very awesome, Leva. And frame your characters, right? Yep. You've got the character on top of a pillar. Move the character into the negative space. That's where our eyes expect to see it, right? It, you have an impact Nichols. that way. Hey, James. Nice use of reference. James yeah. what, sorry? James Nichols. Nichols. Okay. Ooh, okay. This is cool. See, this, yeah, this is what the idea when we say reference some paintings and some illustrations that have captured the detail and the look and the feel that you want to go for. Because yeah. uh, then he could see one for one what he needs to do yeah. Yeah. Uh, on that kind of level, in addition to the photographic references. Yeah. Very, and you can see how that, this is, that kind of reference translates into a piece of quote unquote fantasy art quite successfully, too, right? Yeah. I think you're really, there's a lot of. You've got a lot of the castle up on the top, and it kind of pushes your character down. Try mm -hmm. not to split up your canvas 50-50. Tyler's always picking on people for going for being a yeah, little... Yeah, that's what's happening that here. Portion. Split it up. Go like two-thirds, one-third type of idea or something. Have that character occupy more of the thing. Have you'll, You won't be cramming that hand into the image. You'll have a little bit more of arm, get some fabric for drama, that kind of idea. If we take this guy, it, this will be like a lot stronger if we just nudge him up. Yeah. Like this whole... There you go. See? Like something like there. Yeah. And then, you know, this could either be the bottom of it. Mm-hmm. 
or and then you just redraw some of the uh, the, the structures up here. Yeah. But like now it's about him. Yeah. You know, and then you can get see like this. We got the nice kind of cool lights uh, accenting. Yeah. So aside from the, like the moonlight, you can get that in there. Yeah, you can really even... start bathing this light over the forums. Yeah. And you know, getting into his whole pose and his story, and then of course refining him. Because like he's looking really good, but then the the rest of it looks very color, like very sketch, very yeah. sketchy. Like if you go for card art or this type of illustration, this would be considered too loose to most art directors. Yeah, and look, you can see in the piece by Shara. I can't read that last name. Dursano. Dursano. Okay, look how that light source is very definitive. Imagine what you would get. Imagine what you could get if you boosted up the value, that boosted up the brightness of that moon. And had like shafts of that god light of the moon shining through the castle. A like, little more saturation. Shining down on your character, right? You can, lighting is, uh, uh, like they say, cinematographers paint with light. Use that light as a way of adding texture and life and energy into a piece. It's interactive with its environment. It's not just a placeholder. So play with that light. Have fun with it. Because that's how you're gonna inject a lot Guys, of. You can of just talk over while I'm trying to manage all this other stuff. That's why it's yeah. a good team effort. <laughs> yeah, yeah, check this out. Man. To get it, get it done Lovely. so so uh, so close of time. All right, well, what's their name? BST MD. Okay, MD. MD. All right, MD. I've seen this the one. This is, this is very nice. Very nicely drawn. Uh, I love this composition here. Mm-hmm. Really cool sketch too. Lovely work in that sketch. Like this really works. I think it does work for the most part. I, like we we can look at this and we know what's happening. Yeah. I think this works better, in, in my opinion, bringing us down, you know, in and behind the character. Huh. Uh, not that to say that this doesn't work. I just, you know, personal preference wise, I think this is a stronger option. Because yeah. what's happening here for me, we have like we have this nice kind of three, um, three point perspective camera angle and stuff but then we have like these rocks over here right. right all these rocks are very flat and they seem arbitrary in comparison yeah like they're really encroaching on the space here and almost creating like a tangent that's just overlapping the structure that's this uh-huh which is why i just preferred this one better i think it was a better design right even though this is ex extremely accessible and it reads you know it reads well it's just i think more problematic yeah 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 also, compositionally, that wizard character you have is is an important. He's he is the character, right? And uh, you crammed it into this negative space with a chain on top of him, and you're kind of creating a very claustrophobic acting area for him. Yeah. Uh, so I would think of I would personally take that chain out or move it um, to open up that space for him. Maybe scale him up a little bit, or just try to open up that area a little bit more so he's not uh, you're not cramming him into a tight space. If we had him, if you had him. Yeah, look like at that. Up in the foreground on an element, simplify everything around him. That's better. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. But overall, it's a great job. You have really nice rendering here, and you, you got you're starting to get that right amount of level for you know tightening things up. Narrative wise, we don't see artifact, right? We yeah. see a place where an artifact might exist, but we're not getting that artifact. So that some, moment. Remember, you got to stick to the narrative because if you were working doing this professionally, the director would say, "Where's the artifact?" Shot that's that's what this piece is supposed to be about. This, so remember, the moment, the, the action, the pursuit. Right up in on the action. Yeah. All right, here we go, John. Van Helsing being chased by Nazgul. Very nice. This done. is starting to work. Yeah. The the colors are still little wish-washy in terms of they're just running you, you want a little more control over them it very much looks like we took a you know the black and white and we just overlaid um a lot of color and, and that's how it that's how it just looks uh so we have to be very conscious and very deliberate with our color choices and our mark making in terms of our brush strokes and our overall control uh the other issue i think you know, this is just almost pure white and it's totally washing a lot of that background out um and yeah, I just don't think it's necessary. Yeah, uh, yeah. I don't have much to add to that. I would just maybe say, just um, uh, be careful with your volumes. Like for instance, that the 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 cloaked figure on the on the dragon up at the top, he's kind of missing the back of his head a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like so yeah, do I see that things like that. Um, you know, just be careful that when you have like a cloak or something, there's a body under that cloak. So take in, take into account that anatomy underneath. 
uh, yeah. A lot uh, of, just like a lot of the texture here, um, you're gonna need like you you've set yourself up to a high standard with a high challenge in regards to the content of this image. You have a city, you have a character running, and you know an, an animated character. You have a creature design. You have you have another character design. You have a, a lot that needs to be resolved here. Not just like in terms of what you have to render, but what you have to think about and execute. There's right. a lot on your plate. You took a lot. You took a lot to. Di you took a lot to dinner. Now you got to finish it up. Is what I'm yeah. saying. So you need yeah. to like really figure out how you're going to render all these forms. This is completely flat. This is a completely flat shape with like a few like lines that you know substituting form for drawing, and right. that needs to be resolved as well. Yeah. But yeah, it, 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 the idea is cool. The narrative is working. The composition's working. You just need to work on the rendering and how you're going to tackle some of your issues here. Uh -uh. Anything to add, Adam? No, well, you pretty much pretty much summarized it. Yeah. Good stuff. All right, Antoine. All right, that's an awesome, awesome stuff. Oh, great reference. I think our third, our third or fourth drifter in the forest. Antoine actually on. has the outfit, the bastard. <laughs> he actually owns the outfit. I'm always doing this with like sheets and broomsticks. You know, he's actually got the, the outfit. outfit. He got the whole rogue thing going on. That's awesome. Uh, hence, it translates nicely into the finished piece too. I think you're you're getting a little flat with your forms up in the head, and so. that's actually the camera. That's actually the lens on your camera. I don't know if you used to. I don't know if you got a. You did it with yourself. Even with this reference, you could see more of the forms. Like yeah, you know that if we take that lighter blue, you have well. In this case, that was a bad bed. <laughs> well, here, Antoine, if you look at the picture you've got, the, the lighting is coming from the front, right? Which is fine. I mean, that's good for understanding the form. But out. in the case when you have a challenging angle, you want to see the shadow of that jawline to help distinguish that angle, angle of the face. Mm -hmm. So try to find a lighting situation that helps highlight that three-dimensional form from that tricky angle. Otherwise, you just get that flat lighting and it's hard to understand the form. That really is the... the he, he, he also feels <laughs> um, very stiff in terms of how he's standing here. Yeah. This is where I'd reference some of Frazetta's poses and stuff to really, you know, twist. You know, more twisting on the waist, more even twisting kind of up here in the chest. Mm -hmm. you, know, you get more motion into your guy. So we, you know, we have like the, you know, the form up here very... Everything's very aligned. And yeah. if we look at, you know, the human body where we can articulate our points... We yeah. can get a lot more movement and motion into things. Yeah, and uh, in the vein of Frazetta, you're giving yourself a challenge. A third-person perspective on a human form is a very challenging thing to do. It's great that you referenced it, but when you're, even when you're posing, look towards playing with the towards and away from. It's not just about the getting a solving a pose. It's about the actual... If you look at Frazetta's work, he's, his characters are always coming out of the image. They're go, it's an in-and-out thing, not a side-to-side -side thing. So pay attention to that as well. That way the, the globe can be right up in your face. So you get that nice sense of depth, right? That's one of the advantages of going third-person perspective. I and nice I think the depth. you got the color variety correct, like on the sack and stuff, but yeah. I'm not seeing this beautiful variety anywhere else. Like mm -hmm. this is very monochromatic, very monochromatic, using too much white to tint and, yeah. again, too much uh, black to, to shade when you yeah. have like some beautiful variety starting to happen here. Take yeah. that bring it through the rest of your image. Professionally speaking too, you'd probably be asked to put another detail pass on a couple of those things like the cloak and the pouch and all that. You know, try to define what that pouch looks like. Get some of the stitching and edges into there uh, just for the sake of solving it because if it's too flat, it's, you'd be asked to fix that, right? You would. We're just being real. Yeah, yeah. Keep it real. MD. Are we oh. on our last one? I can't believe we've actually made yeah. it. Holy smokes. All right. So we got something totally... Man. Now, Relic, where's our Relic? Uh, it's happening here. Where? Like, I get, the, okay, this is the Moonlight. The Drifter's coming out. They're either coming in to recover something. So you can also tell that it's a story moment because he's got a reflection in his visor. The gun's pointed at the camera. Oh, okay. I see what's and right. I think it's, see, he, the cart here is hauling the artifact. Oh. And they're trying to get him into the Moonlight Drifter uh, pod here to escape, okay. and these guys are pursuing them. This is actually working extremely well. Yeah, okay, no, 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 I didn't get that. That's totally cool. I just pieced it together. Cool. Yeah. Uh, compositionally, we saw exactly kind of the same idea with the one there with the, the arrows, the barrage of arrows. There's a lot of negative space between, between location and destination. Bring that in more. Your Brings character is really a little bit. that mountain on the left, right? 
play with that negative space to create a it's more clear read in your composition. Um, yeah. And maybe bring yeah, bring him over just like a tad, just a tad. Yeah, I, I'm sure little. Tyler would also pick on your your over obviousness of the texture on that sand as well. You know, like I think it, I, it's not that bad. I would just paint a little more on top of it. Yeah, just like a, a few more deliberate um, rocks, and maybe you need like a mixer brush or one of those real bristle br uh, real bristle brushes, and get just a few more of your own brush strokes just to yeah. integrate it well. Because like it's very obvious, like here that you know. It, this is very painted, very painted, and then it's very photo-y very quickly. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, you have, like, the right kind of reference. I get a little more. This just, I think, needs a little more design overall. It's very square, very boxy altogether. Uh, and a little flat in, in some of these shadow areas. See, we can, like, totally illuminate this form in here. We paint that blue instead of black. Yeah. Same with, like, a lot of this. Uh, so, like, this just feels very boxy and a little un... Not quite as designed as something like this. So you could have more gauges, more pumps, more hoses, more uh, shocks, uh, and then break up. Like, because all I can see when I look at this, honestly, is a box. Yeah. So you want to make it look cooler. The rule of cool. Think of how do how can I make this look cooler? Sell yeah. it to an audience. I think this is brilliant that you got some of the light illuminating there. You could probably tone that down a little bit and play a little bit more with that glow. Figure out some more references in terms of like how this glowing object in here can be played up just a little bit. But overall, this is like a fantastic uh, idea yeah. and composition for this moment of storytelling. I like it. Yeah, very much so. Very much. All right. That's everybody. We've done it. So now the... Now All right. So uh, we're here again with our two favorites from this uh, month's entry. And overall, a great job to everybody that yeah. entered. And not uh, these two just had a little bit more of what we were looking for. They're getting there a lot more the consistency in the pre presentation which is like yeah. everything you could have a to any style you want works but it's the consistency of that and again presenting our idea and the illustration and sticking to narratives and uh, kind of that's what we're looking for basically yeah absolutely but these two are certainly our favorite there i think we're they're very successful in their own rights yeah. and the, the, these two artists are working their ass off to get there yeah, and everybody has, you know, everybody. beautiful work from everybody, but it's just really, it all comes down to, did you solve the questions that were asked of you, right? And uh, and these ones really do nail it, really do nail it nicely. So uh, yeah, hats off to the winners, for yep. sure. And, and, and John again. So awesome, good job, guys. And I'll, if you're watching this after the fact, just keep an eye on the events page for the brush us. Uh, where we, Adam and I do these monthly. There's also, I think, a intermittent contest that you guys have started on your own. I think Rodney runs that, which is awesome. Uh, so keep, everybody keep up the great work, all right? Yeah. We'll all yeah, grow yeah. together. Beautiful work, guys.